Like, the goal was to make the characters all look as much like oil paintings as possible, but because of whatever happened with Unreal Engine, it just looks like they're all made of clay. Hello and welcome to another Nihongo Gamer video. Super exciting today because I've got this giant parcel, which actually, I don't know how if you can see exactly how big it is. It actually got multiple, not just one, not just two, but three Kotobukiya figures which have been sent to me for review from Kotobukiya. So thank you very much for sending me these products so that I can make these videos for you. They actually asked me like, what st sort of stuff are you interested in? And I was like, yes, yeah, send me, send me these ones. I really want to see these things. They've actually sent me a very special figure which coincides with a certain event happening this weekend known as Capcom Cup. And so I'm very excited that they've sent me this product at exactly the same moment, the same weekend that this tournament is happening so that I can hopefully show you something super, super relevant. What's inside this box is in fact a battle costume limited edition store exclusive. The only place you can actually get this figure was at New York Comic Con 2018 or if you go to one of the three Kotobukiya shops in Japan. If I'm not mistaken, this is the battle costume that was released when the game was released like three years ago. So on launch, I think I pretty, I think I bought something called the Street Fighter V Hot Package, and there was like a like a hot version of Ryu and a hot version of Chun Li. Anyway, they had these battle costumes. And this this battle costume that we get with Chun Li was actually black. But if I'm not mistaken, this is a special like blue version. Oh, this is a special blue edition of that costume that Chun-Li has in the game. And actually, you'll if you've actually watched any Street Fighter tournaments before, you'll actually be very familiar with this costume because players like, you know, MOV play this character. I think Ricky Ortiz also plays it. So this is it. This is the Street Fighter Bishoujo statue. And if I'm not mistaken, this is actual an actual series. So there's a lot of different Street Fighter characters who are in this Bishoujo series, which is basically like, the animification of the character. I mean, they're already kind of anime to start with, but you know, it's like even more anime than normal. The fun thing about Chun-Li is that she has actually got the most costumes in this game because people keep buying them. If you, As long as you guys keep buying the costumes, they're gonna keep making them. Look at this, it's just tons and tons of costumes. All right, so let's have a look at this box, shall we? It says Street Fighter in the corner, Street Fighter Bishoujo statue, Chun-Li arranged by Shunya Yamashita. I guess this is the sculptor who has designed this particular pose. It's of the Bishoujo series, Battle Costume Limited Edition. It's got a little window in the front so you can actually see the character through the window and from the side. Kotobukiya brings you a new art collection designed by Shunya Yamashita, a well-known Japanese illustrator and game designer, famous for his beautiful female characters. I don't know if there's supposed to be an S there, but your hair is in the way, Chun-Li. On the back of the box, you can see a little illustration of what the character is gonna look like on the inside, front view, and the all-important rear view. I was very curious to know how the underwear works and now we can see a small glimpse of it there. Now I always laugh that they make these top windows for these figures because even though there is a top window you really can't see anything. Oh it's not for the window it's for light to come in so that it looks nice. If it's covered it looks dark. Uh, I see. Well we learned something today. All right let's go ahead and cut this here. Remember to check with your parent or guardian before you use sharp objects to cut open plastic boxes for toys. Be very very careful. Alright, take her out of her plastic prison. Yeah! I am not going to throw it this time. Ooh. I may pretend to throw it. Alright, now the fun part, taking her out of the actual box. So let's carefully cut around all of these edges here. And remember all my Boy Scout training. Now if I damage this, I'll be... I'll literally cry. So anyone who has this, it means that they went to New York Comic Con, or they actually ventured and did the pilgrimage to Japan. Ultra limited. Basil costume blue version of Chun-Li and oh my goodness. Check it out! She's stuck, she, she, the plastic won't let go, hold on. Why do I always buy figures that are only standing on one leg? And I am gonna throw this. There we go. All right, Herr Doctor, I am removing the plastic now. Well, it's better than I was expecting. Let's prevent any damage between her hand bumping into her leg. Oh man! There you have it ladies and gentlemen, this is Chen Li in her battle costume, limited edition blue for the Kotobukiya store in Japan. Well I've learned recently from reading the Street Fighter character design book, that apparently the design ethic with this game was oil painting. 
And so a lot of people aren't really aware of this, but a lot of the characters look like they're made out of clay in the original video game. Like, this doesn't look anything like clay, but something that happened in the, the, the way that they developed the game is that, like, the goal was to make the characters all look as much like oil paintings as possible, but because of whatever happened with Unreal Engine, it just looks like they're all made of clay. So actually, I think this is actually a better realization of probably what they were trying that what they were aiming to do. Like every stroke of hair is, is more like a brush stroke of oil on canvas. So I don't even know if for specific, if this really is a Street Fighter V designed costume. It doesn't say Street Fighter V anywhere on the box. All right, now Chun-Li is one of those characters who has interesting stuff going on pretty much every inch of her entire body. But, <laughs> but we're gonna, we, gotta, we gotta start somewhere. So let's start with the head. It's looking good on the eyes and mouth. And I think something that's probably really challenging with Chun-Li is that she's supposedly the world's strongest woman. So they want her to look like the strongest woman on, on earth, but they don't want her to look like she's been through war, right? <laughs> I'm always so impressed by these figures by the amount of detail they managed to put into the like the eyelashes and even like you know down here on the lower eyelashes as well like it's so small let's have a look at the hair like I was discussing before I think that real oil painting on canvas look has really translated through to this design because the hair really does look like gorgeous brush strokes so check out the the very very slight level of blush on her cheeks. There's a very, very subtle amount of it because obviously if you put too much, she starts to look like she's embarrassed. But they've put just enough, they call it cheek in Japan, but they, um, just blush makeup. Really, really quite subtle. It's funny, funny, because the people who do these designs, like they must also be experts in, in women's makeup as well. It's like, wow. To be, a, to be a figure designer, you really got to master so many different aspects of, of people. Plenty of detail here on the hands and on these spiky rings that she wears on her wrist. All right, now the all important bust zone. That is a very dangerous looking costume. You don't want to be moving too violently while wearing an outfit like this, just in case you fall out, but it's believable, right? Like you could have like inside here, you could have some sort of special sport bra <laughs> right down the middle that pulls you up until your your perfect ideal shape that you're looking for, and then you just wear the dress over the top of it. I don't know, I'm no expert. More than I expected, it's got quite a lot of shine to it. Like you can see my ceiling light. Watch how the highlight actually reflects as you choose different angles. So this is like a gorgeous, gorgeous figure if you've got one of those table spinners and you just have the figure constantly, constantly spinning around because even though she's stood still, her hair has got the movement of a character who is in the middle of spinning around. I'm actually considering getting one. I saw one at the Kotobukiya shop. There's like a motorized spinner. Those of you who've been following my Street Fighter V progress, because I play the video game itself as well, you'll know that I'm an Ibuki main, actually. The main, main character that I use is Ibuki. And she's got very similar arms to Chun-Li in that she's incredibly strong, but they've managed to find some crazy balance where like they've got strong definition in the muscles on the arm, but they're not so ripped that it actually changes the flow of the shape along the arm. So what I really like is what they've done with the with Chun-Li, and I guess if they were to make an Ibuki mod model, hopefully they'd do the same. They have these beautiful, beautiful muscles on the arm that don't pop out like potatoes. And actually, I think that's one of the cri main criticisms with a lot of Street Fighter V models is that they look like they've got tennis balls, like bulging out of their arms. It looks like they've handled it incredibly delicately. They've actually got really beautiful muscles, but they're not bulging out of the arm and destroying like the flow of this shape because just as a work of art, just to feast your eyes on is just so gorgeous. And if you thought that the chest area was the most dangerous bit of the costume, you were wrong. In fact, it gets even more dangerous. Check it out down here. If this were to blow out of the way, there is apparently protection. I don't know if you can see in here. Just to calm the nerves of anyone who was wondering, she is wearing underwear under here. I think there was worry because when you see it from the front, it's very, it's like the perfect pose, which masks whether or not she is wearing underwear. It just leaves it to your imagination. But if she were in a situation where her lightning legs moves, even in those situations, you don't need to worry. She does have something to protect her dignity. The more and more I look at this, the more and more I realize how important it is that you put this on a motorized spinning. Like this is I, this is exactly the sort of figure that you want to be rotating constantly, constantly. Now, one thing I will say about this character and this figure in general is that although I'm a big fan of Chun-Li, there is an aesthetic choice with Street Fighter V 
to give every single character massive thighs and massive arms. And I, that's fine. If that's, if that's what you're into, that's fine. But what, what, what has always bugged me about Street Fighter V is that instead of just choosing which characters are gonna have the big legs and the big arms, they've just given every single character big legs and big arms. So pretty much every character is Chun-Li in Street Fighter V. So that's, that's what kind of annoys me. I wish they had been a little more selective about it. Now, something that I can't show you through video is that actually touching this figure is incredibly satisfying because I realize that it's just because of the material that it's made from, but you expect to like touch skin and it feel like quite soft and supple. But with Chun-Li, it's like incredibly taut. Like you actually believe that this, it might be what her muscles actually feel like, like really, really tough. All right, I've only just noticed this, but check out the detail on her back. Oh my goodness. There are muscles that I did not know existed until now looking at this. Figure. I don't even know what those muscles on her back do. That is insane. She's doing a pose, but she's not flexing her muscle. So in this just, I want to look graceful pose. That's what happens to your back when you do that? That's insane. This is like an anatomy lesson for me. So you go all the way down to the base of the figure and there she is standing on her one leg. Like pretty much every figure I ever buy, it's always of a girl standing on one leg. I don't know, maybe I have a fetish for women who stand on one leg. That is her pose. She's not wearing high heels. She's wearing, I, I call these pumps, but other people say that pumps are actually the shoes with heels on them. She's actually just standing on her toe. It's not a high heeled shoe. In fact, there's no heel on this shoe at all. Honestly, compared to the rest of the figure, which is incredibly ornate and detailed, it's quite surprising to have quite a simple shoe. I feel like this is the sort of shoe that you just wear when you're like going down to 7-Eleven. You just need to put some shoes on and these ones are like easy to slip on. But hey, maybe this is required. This is the sort of footwear required to do a thousand legs kick or the 100 legs kick, whatever it's called. Check out the folds on this. Now on the front fabric of her dress, it's nice and flowy, but on the back, what they've done is they've actually shown that there is a certain hardness to this dress material that causes it to bend at quite a specific, a sharper angle than I was expecting for soft fabric. And I, I like little design cues that let you know a little bit more information about like maybe what the material was probably originally made of. That is fabulous. I think fabulous is probably the right word for this. I don't know how much of this is because of anatomy or because they're just trying to show how incredibly epic and ripped she is, but check out how taut the muscles are on her, on her neck. Like, wow, they are really holding her neck in place. Honestly, I could probably sit here for another hour talking about how much detail is on this figure and I would still not do it justice. I could just continue to talk about the folds here, the, the choice of color, the fact that it glosses so well, the way that the muscles have been designed, the blush on the cheeks, the lipstick, the, the way that the hair has been sculpted, every individual stroke of the brush stroke of the hair here. One final look at these little stickers. These will actually go on the base here and I'll just give you a closer look. This is the first one with Chun-Li's face on it and the word Street Fighter. Fortunately, her face isn't right in the middle so when she stands on the base of the thing, it's, she's not actually standing on her own face. And then there's one here that's just the standard Street Fighter logo. But interestingly, it's not the Street Fighter V logo. In fact, currently this week, you can play Street Fighter V for free. Wow, we're doing all the sponsored stuff today. Clapcom has not actually told me to say that but right currently this week you can actually play Street Fighter 5 for free for an entire week but it's funny like like this character is clearly the Street Fighter 5 version of Chun-Li but it doesn't say Street Fighter 5 on the branding anywhere just notice I could also talk to you about like the hat the detail on the hands here and just the pose of the fist and the pose of this the, the, the perfect angles on these on these fingers here this figure is only available apparently at the Japanese Kotobukiya shops, and I have a list of them here. I'm going to find them, it's in this email here somewhere. The Chun-Li Battle Costume Kotobukiya store exclusive item is available at their current three Kotobukiya shops in Japan. They're in Tachikawa, Akihabara, and Nipponbashi, which is in Osaka. So if you're on the east side of Japan, you wanna to go to Tachikawa or Akihabara. And if you're in the west side over in Osaka, you wanna check out the store in Nipponbashi. It's not just Street Fighter figures, they do all sorts of stuff. In fact, probably the first Kotobukiya stuff that I bought was actually the Q-Posh figures because they're like Nendoroids, but you can actually do more poses with them. Like Nendoroids have their own special thing. But what I liked about Q-Posh was like, 
You could do Instagram funny little comics because they've got more joints on their arms and stuff and you can do all sorts of great poses with them. So this is another one that I'm going to check out in a future video. This is a Frame Arms Hatsune Miku. Kaede Agatsuma. So if you're familiar with Frame Arms, I'm going to be checking these out. I've always wanted to do these because I don't have a lot of experience in building models. I built some Evangelion stuff when I was a kid and some Gundam stuff, but I'm really interested in this Frame Arms girl stuff, especially because there's a Hatsune Miku version. But let me know in the comments if you're interested in seeing me build those, or maybe you just want to see a review of the final product. That's it, guys, for the Japan. 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 You know, like, whee, the sound that comes on the Street Fighter 2. The Japan exclusive, or New York Comic Con 2018 exclusive, Battle Costume Limited Edition Chun-Li Street Fighter Bishoujo Series statue from Kotobukiya. Thanks again to Kotobukiya for sponsoring this video, well, providing this free sample for me to actually make a video and show it to you. Any questions you've got, do let me know in the comment section below, and I will try to either make a follow-up video or just reply to you in the comment section itself. All right, that's all for now. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, share the links, and all that great stuff, and I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video or stream or Twitter or Discord or one of the hundred other places that you can find me. See you next time.